that fight. If that don't move you, your wood's wet. Your wood is wet. I'm going to tell you something. Your faith and your trust has to be in God. Has to be. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for this privilege to stand before you tonight. And I thank God for His love and His mercy. I thank God for His calling. I don't know why He chose me, but He chose me. And I want to do the very best that I can to please Him. I love every one of you, but I'm here to please Him. Okay. And I have been fighting. I've been wrestling, Pastor Donnie. I've been wrestling with this message. I'm telling you. I mean, the devil's been trying, trying and I said, well, Lord, and you was talking about this morning giving in. I said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. You know, if you give in to flesh, to give in to your flesh, you're going to miss out on a whole lot of things. If you give, I don't give out, give in on the flesh. But then I, tonight I want to speak about travailing in the spirit or for, uh, travailing prayer. Okay? But before I do that, I want to go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Let's everyone bow our heads. Precious Father, as I come before your presence again this evening, Lord, I am so thankful that I know that you are God and there is none other. There is none other, Father. I know that you are my hope, you are my stay. You are my high tower, Father. You are my hiding place. Father, I thank you, God, that I could come before you with every problem, every situation, every worry, God, and I can lay it at your feet, Lord, and you're able. Father, you're able just to speak the word and it shall be done. I thank you, God, for this word that you are letting me speak tonight, God, and I pray, God, that you would anoint this word. I pray, God, that the word would go out, God, and accomplish what you sent it to do. Father, I thank you, Lord, because I am only your humble servant. And I pray, God, that you would use me mightily, Father, for your glory and your praise, I'm asking. In Jesus' name. All God's children said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to get through this without crying. Not promising anything. <clears throat> what is prevailing prayer? It is crying in the spirit, which takes on several different manifestations. John chapter 16, verse 20 through 22. John 16, 20 through 22. This is Jesus speaking, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament. And lament means a passionate expression of grief. A passionate expression of grief. But the world shall rejoice and you shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she, she is delivered of the child, she remembered it no more. And the anguish, anguish for joy that man is born unto the world. And I, I thought about that. I thought about that thing. I had have, I have two children of my own. It was not an easy thing because I'm a short person. My children were big. Didn't work. So I had to have a C-section with both of my children. And the first child, I was in labor 48 hours. I was in hard labor 48 hours. As a matter of fact, the doctor told me that I almost, almost died. But God brought me through. I know the pain. I know the pain. And if any of, the, any of my sisters in here has had children, you know the pain. Hallelujah. You know the pain going through that childbirth. You know, and not only the childbirth, but the nine months up to the childbirth. Okay? Feet swelling and all that kind of good stuff. But when they lay that baby in your arms, hallelujah, when they lay that child in your arms, 
all that pain disappears. Because that's the work, that's the joy of your labor. Right there. And did you know that there's a lot of us that have children now that are lost and done done without God? You may have a wife or a husband that's lost. You may have relatives that's lost. And did you know that you can travail in the spirit for these people? You can travail in the spirit for these people. Travailing prayer is a manifestation of the grief of the heart of God. This also has a parallel, parallel meaning, applies to prayer that cries out unto God. Perhaps we can understand this better if we realize that we now have the Holy Spirit living in us and He has chosen us, He has chosen to use our mouths to speak for Him. And since He has chosen to use us in this great plan to spread the gospel, He uses our mouth to witness to others and our hands to help people. Another beautiful truth that is often overlooked is that He also uses our hearts and our emotions to weep and to cry. The Spirit of God expresses His grief in this manner when we have a burden for others and become sorrowful over them. It is usually the Holy Spirit is crying through us over the situation, bringing life and joy after it is finished. We've been praying for a good while now on the, in the evenings. And uh, Mama Dana would look at me and she said, well, let them come look at you. You crying. I can't help it. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but I see a lost and dying world. And when I see a lost and dying world, it's Mama Dana, my heart breaks. My heart breaks, and my only, my only tool that I have, my pastor, is prayer. And I have to travail in prayer. Praise God. Just as a woman cries to bring forth a child during birth, yet she is rejoicing as soon as the child is born. We do the same as we yield to the Spirit and take burdens for others. God's heart is burdened for people. Let me tell you, God's heart is burdened for people. Because He loves people. All God's people, He breathed life into. You were talking this morning, Pastor, you were talking about how the church sometimes talk about somebody else. And thought thought went to my mind, that's God's child. If you, if you choose to talk about one of your brothers or your sisters or your neighbors, that's God's child. And you're not only offending that child, but you're offending God because it belongs to Him. Amen? That's just a little extra. It didn't cost you nothing. Okay? And He's looking for hearts that can cry and weep through. Hearts that are concerned for the lost and dying world. You know, God is looking for you. I prayed tonight and I asked God, I said, Lord, I want you to bring just the right people into the service. Just the people that you can use, Lord, for your, for your service. And you wonder why you're here. It's because he brought you. He wants you to hear something. He wants you to hear it. Open up your ears and hear what God has to say. When we weep over others while we, we petition God on their behalf, it breaks something in the spirit so that the answer from the life for the li their lives can come forth. If they need salvation or if they need healing or even if they need a miracle, the spirit releases them to be able to receive their need. Psalms 126 5 and 6, 126, 5 and 6 says, They that sorrow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth and weeping, weepeth, bearing precious seed, 
shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Sheaves is bringing souls. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26, 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps help us our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession, he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to God's will. I have heard people say, well, Sister Belinda, I want you to pray that I'll have this and this and this. I said, I'll pray God's will be done. I can't pray for you to have a Cadillac. It may not be God's will. He may want you to have a Honda. You know? Or a moped. It'll get you from one distance to the other. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. If 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 we know what to say, then this, you know we sometimes we don't know what to say when we go to the Lord. And that's one way. That's one reason I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I thank God for the Holy Ghost because sometimes I really don't know what to say. I don't know what to do, but I can go to the Lord and I can pray. And when I get in the Spirit, He He starts praying for me. Hallelujah! He starts praying for me. And when He starts praying, answers come. Hallelujah! When the Holy Ghost starts praying, answers come. Hallelujah! And I'm going to tell you another thing that will cost you a sense. And it may not end up the way you prayed. The way you prayed. But it don't, it's always going to end up the way God's will is. Because it will be done. Hallelujah. We also, we are also to tra travail for our own infirmities. God said for us to go for ourselves. And a lot of folk have trouble with this situation. Well, I can pray for everybody else, but I don't know if I can pray for myself. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're if you're wanting to get to where God has you to be, you need to start praying for yourself. You need some direction. You need some inspiration. And only, uh, the only way to get that is through the power and the prayer that you pray to God. God will give you direction. God will give you understanding. And these, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 66 and 8 says, Isaiah 66 and 8 it shall, it, it shall, excuse me, it says as soon as Zion travails, she brings forth her children. Christians are usually referred to in the word of God as Zion or God's people. These birth pains can be experienced by men as well as women. For the spirit, there is neither male nor female. Now, my husband, I'm going to pick on him just a minute. I can't because I, I got glasses. I can do that. <laughs> he has had kidney stones twice since we were married. And the first time he was riding a motorcycle down the road when the kidney stones hit him all of a sudden. And he came home and he said, Belinda, I'm dying. I'm just dying. I, I said, well, I'm going to take you to the hospital. And I was taking him to the hospital. And he said, I ain't going to make it. I ain't going to make it. I'm going to die before I get there. I'm going to die. I said, Earl, just hold on, baby. I'm getting you there. He said, no, I'm going to die. He was just sweating and he was in pain. And, and the doctor looked at him and said, well, Mr. Worley, did you know this is just the same thing as childbirth? <laughs> Hello. He experienced it just a second. He didn't like it. He didn't like it a bit. So I'm telling you that my brothers and my sisters, we all can travail in the spirit. Amen? We can, we can go to God in prayer and we can both know. In Galatians 3, 26 and 28, 
For we are, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized in, into Christ, put on Christ. Therefore, neither Jew or Greek, there's neither neighbor, there's, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Jesus Christ. So there's no big eyes and little U's, and we can all pray the same way. We can all we all have the privilege of going to the to the Father. We all have that privilege to go to Him and cry out to Him, and He will answer us. In in um, John chapter eleven, if you'd like to turn with me, John chapter eleven. I'm going to read thirty-two through forty. This is a very uh, familiar passage. It's about Lazarus. Verses 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and seeing him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Then he said, Where where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And and some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself coming to the grave. It was clay, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha the sister of him said, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he seeketh, for he hath been dead for four days. Four days. Jesus said unto her, I said, I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. This is Jesus speaking right here. He said, Said I not thee, that if thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God, even though it's dead, even that thing is dead in your life and you don't have hope to see it, even if you believe God, you shall see it, if you can only believe it. Hallelujah. Jesus, the hope of all creation, was standing in front of her. And she said, my brother's dead. He's already dead. He's in the ground. And surely he's thinking by now. But he, she, he said, don't you believe? I am the resurrection and the life. There's no man comes to the Father but by me. And I'm going to show you some things. I want you to move that stone out of the way. I'm going to tell you to move it out of the way. He's telling you to move. He's telling you, and when you come to the Lord, He's going to tell you to move that stone out of the way and let Him work His magic. Amen. And my Jesus can do it. He raised Lazarus, and he did. I know that he can. You see, Jesus was still in travail when he approached the grave. Then he spoke the word for Lazarus to come forth, and the miracle took place as he raised him from the dead. The miracle, children. This man was stone dead. Even four days. Okay? But the greatest travail of all time was, uh, excuse me, but the greatest travail of all time was the Lord's travailing for souls in the Garden of Eden, Garden of Gethsemane, before he went to the cross for the sins of the world. Luke 22, 41 and 44. 22, 41 and 44. And he was drawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed 
saying, Father, if thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. If thou be willing. I'm sure he waited just a minute to hear and see if God answered him. Father, if thou be willing, can you just move it away from me? This just one time. Knowing all the time in his heart that he had a purpose. God had a plan. Then he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And then appeared, then appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Now a lot of people miss this passage. An angel came to him and strengthened him. He was at his weakest. He needed help. And God sent him help. He sent him help and he strengthened him. And then after that, he said, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it was great drops of blood falling down from the ground. I'm going to pick on my husband again. My husband works hard. I, I, I thank God for my husband. I really do. Earl, Earl is a hardworking man. He'll do just about anything. But when he works outside, he sweats a lot. I mean, his clothes, everything's wet. But there's a lot of people don't want to spend that much time in sweat. You see, Jesus didn't say a short prayer, thank you God and I'm gone. He was there agonizing for you. And Jesus said he came to be our example. Did he not? So if my Lord can spend a couple of hours in prayer, surely I can spend 30 minutes. Surely I can go to Him and I can cry out to Him. Surely I can do that too. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, 11 and 12. Isaiah 53, 11 and 12. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall, the, my, shall my righteous servants justify many. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out of his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors and he bared the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You see, Jesus, when he was on the when he was there in Gethsemane, he made way to have to give you a portion, to give you a portion of joy, to give you a portion of happiness, to give you a portion of help, hope, to give you a portion of love. You see, Jesus gave to you as he was pouring out. He gave to you, and when, why can't we do the same thing? If we say we love our family, why can't we do the same thing? And I'm telling you something. This church is our family. I come to church on Sunday and I come to, I, sometimes I get to come on Wednesdays. But I look around and I know who's not here. And I just don't miss them. I'm concerned. And I pray. I pray for them because they're my brothers and my sisters. And they need something from the Lord. True intercessors, intercessors will have a, a spirit of travail. This is one of the keys that will bring souls to God. The overcomers will be men and women who experience the same travail as, a, as our Lord. Revelations 21, Revelations 21, 4 and 7. And God, and God, shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall be there be any more pain. There shall be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I, am, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. 
He said, God said, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Not just some, but he said all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my people. You see, as we travail in prayer for our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, family, we know that God is listening. And He will, he will answer us. Our hope should only be in Him. You see, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what it looks like. I have seen people say, Well, I'm not going to pray for my son no more. Because it just, it just looks like he's never going to come to God. It don't matter what it looks like. I don't know if my husband's ever going to do right. Some people say, well, it don't matter what it looks like. You keep on praying. I heard one saint ask me, he said, well, Sister Belinda, how long do I pray? And I said, until God answers you. Until God answers you, that's how long you need to pray. Okay? It doesn't matter what it looks like. You see, it didn't matter what it looked like. We know that we know this from Lazarus. It looked like he was dead. His sisters and friends saw him die. They even buried him. Where was their hope? Where was their hope? Who did they really trust? You see, Mary and Martha knew Jesus. They had him in his house in their house. They, had, they, were, they were close. They were buds. They were peace. But when things fall and things go sour, where's your faith? Where's your trust? You see, Jesus never changed. Not one time did He change. He was the same man before Lazarus died as when he, after He died. Same one. He did the same thing before he died as he did after he died. Same thing. So where's your hope? Where's your faith? Where's your trust? You may think that there is no hope for those you care about. You may think they are too far gone. That's what they thought too. But Jesus showed up. Hallelujah! Jesus showed up and he brought hope and victory. So don't give up. Because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Now when we pray, I, I admonish every one of us to come out and pray on Sunday evenings. Please come out and pray. And see great and mighty things happen because we're praying. Pray because that is the heart of God. Okay? That is the heart of God. And that's how we get answers from the Lord. That's when we pray. Amen? I'm turning to this brother down. The Lord, isn't God awesome, y'all? Intercessory prayer. That's a good word, Belinda. Praise God. God bless you. We need to intercede. We need to pray. And the greatest intercessor we have is Jesus. Amen. He's interceding. I want to thank you for that word, Belinda. That was wonderful. I just enjoy God's word. Don't you enjoy God's word? His word's so powerful. His word is good. Y'all, we are going to go right into prayer now. I encourage everybody who can to stay and pray. What we do is pick out a spot. We'll try to get Brian or someone, if they would, to put on some soft music, instrumental music or something. Just pick out a spot. You can pray as long as you want. You know, it doesn't matter. 5, 10, 15, 20, ever how long you want to pray, pray. But if you want to do any fellowshipping, we encourage you to fellowship outside those two doors. And in here, we're just going to pray in there and see. We're praying for revival, y'all. And uh, I tell you, ever since we started praying, look what God has done, y'all. We're having miracle upon miracle upon miracle, and it continues to happen. God honors prayer. So we need revival. We need a closer walk. Every one of us needs a closer walk with the Lord. And when we just uh, humble ourselves, y'all, that's what prayer is all about, humbling ourselves, realizing 
We can't do it on our own, but through Him all things are possible. So I encourage you now to speak out a spot wherever you want to pray. Pray as long as you like. And uh, when you're through praying, if you want to fellowship in the back, that'll be great. That'll be awesome. Love everybody. God bless you. If you have to leave, God bless you. We love you. But we're going to go ahead and do some intercessory prayer. God bless you.